playing Ms. Pac-Man. That's what I hope to be doing soon on the dedicated original cabinet that we're currently restoring out in the garage. Once that project is finished, we're going to bring it up here and replace the class of 1981 20-year reunion, which is uh, destined for my office at work. But we sure have a long way to go before that restoration project is complete. In this episode, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is tackle the transformer assembly down at the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, we're going to refurbish, recondition that a bit, make sure that it's producing good, safe, clean voltages that are needed by our game PCB and by our monitor. The other thing we're going to do is start the uh, initial process of removing the black paint from the cabinet. So we want to strip all that black paint off and recover or uncover uh, the original side art on the cabinet. This episode is also a bit on the longer side, um, so I've sped up a few portions just to help with the overall pacing. Um, so yeah, let's head upstairs and get started on all that work. Overtime! Okay, what I want to do now is clean up the transformer assembly. This thing had been sitting at the bottom of the cabinet for literally decades, accumulating dirt and dust and who knows what other kind of gunk. Um, I thought about just hosing it down, spraying it down, uh, which I've done multiple times with lots of success with monitor chassis, monitors and monitor chassis. I know some people are skittish about that, but you know we'll do that together relatively soon. I had never done it before for a transformer assembly. Um, so I did a little bit of research and people definitely uh, advised against it, uh, including um, the, uh, the famous Ken Layton, rest in peace, who said, you know, bad news, a little bit of moisture, they um, rust up really, really fast. So uh, I'll avoid that. Um, so I'm really just going to clean this up by hand, you know, especially the, uh, uh, the harness is super, super dirty. Uh, but first things first, I want to knock off all the loose debris. I've got my air compressor, I'm going to grab a brush. Uh, and we'll get all this uh, this stuff knocked right off. So, coming here with this air hose. Let's see what we do. Bit of a messy job, but clean it up now so that when we're working on this, when we're fixing up the transformer assembly, when we're working on the inside of the cabinet, it'll be a lot more pleasant. So a little bit of simple green on the paper towel. Try to not to, try to go with the grain and not, I don't know, rip up the paper towel. Need a lot more, but you can already start to see it coming off. Okay, so I actually ended up pulling everything off of uh, the wood board, uh, both transformers and, and really everything just to make things even easier. Um, so here's the bare transformer assembly board right here. Um, so now I'll be able to, you know, very easily clean everything else, the harness and, and whatnot. One thing I ended up doing by accident was breaking uh, a solder connection between um, a wire and the line filter. So we'll fix that up. And a lot of these solder connections just look really kind of nasty. So um, while I've got things out, I might actually just touch up all of those solder connections. One thing I notice on the board here is uh, the fuses. So obviously this was missing one uh, when I got it, um, or uh, actually it was packed in with that uh, external connector. Um, but the fuses were also wrong. So by the uh, instruction manual, you should have um, uh, two one amp fuses on this side with two five amp fuses. And over on, on this side, the, the, the two fuse block should have, um, I think a two amp slow blow and a 1.5 amp slow blow, according to the instruction manual. Um, like I said, the fuses were, were really wrong that I pulled out. I think one was a 10 amp and one was an eight amp, definitely wrong. Um, but also the little card here has that two amp slow blow. Um, but I can't quite make out what this uh, should be uh, with that um, um, staple in the way. You know, obviously it does not say 1.5 amps. 
Um, I know later um, Miss Pac-Man boards had uh, two amps, and that's actually the recommended voltage, I believe, or amperage, I believe. <clears throat> so I pulled, um, I have a couple of other, uh, this is a another Miss Pac-Man um, transformer assembly and, and harness and filter board. And this is an original Pac-Man transformer assembly. On this Miss Pac-Man, I don't know if you can see it here, um, that card says, uh, you know, two amps low blow and two amps low blow. Uh, on the Pac-Man uh, over here, if it'll focus, it says two amps low blow for line voltage and a 1.5 amps low blow for the 115 volts. So, yeah, I guess, you know, Valley Midway was kind of going through a transition with these, um, but when we replace them, uh, kind of like, so I think this says two amp. Um, so we'll put two two amp slow blow fuses over here, um, two one amp fast blow and two five amp fast blow uh, on that side. So, because uh, that's what we've got on this one and that's what everything, I guess, says online uh, to use. And that should be what the card here says, if we could actually read it underneath all of that. Um, that probably says two amp. And uh, yeah, so the next thing is to clean this filthy harness. Okay, so I did decide to uh, spray it and hose it down, uh, brought this outside onto the, the patio. Uh, I've got the transformers uh, and everything kind of covered up with this box to prevent you know, water from getting on them. Um, laid out the the section of the harness uh, in the grass, uh, sprayed it down with Simple Green, kind of let it soak for a few minutes, and now I'm just gonna come in and blast it with the garden hose. Now that I've got everything cleaned up, or <laughs> at least a lot cleaner than it was, uh, I'm gonna put it all back together uh, on, the, on the wooden board. Uh, one thing I'm not going to include though is, um, the, uh, the power plug, as you can see, it's really sort of got some breaks in the wire there. So um, I've got a new one on order. Uh, we'll save this just to make sure I get the, the plugs uh, connected properly or the connectors uh, polarized properly. So uh, let's go ahead and put the transformer assembly back together. Uh, hopefully everything should fall into place, uh, but I took pictures uh, of how it was originally just in case. So let's do it. Okay, I've got the transformer assembly back together. Uh, went together pretty easily. I did <laughs> cheat a little bit and look at the other uh, Miss Pac-Man transformer assembly just to, to confirm a couple things. But um, yeah, so uh, the next thing I wanna do is um, redo some of these solder connections to the two transformers, to the line filter, uh, just cause they look you know, a little nasty and, and um, want to make sure they're, they're nice and solid. I'm not going to redo it on the uh, fuse blocks, obviously, because I'm going to replace those uh, pretty soon, just waiting on those parts to arrive. Um, so, yeah, so a couple of these are a bit tricky. Um, just put a little bit of flux on. I don't know if that really going to help. But, um, again, my usual way of doing this sort of thing is to add some fresh solder. Um, and then take all of it off and then redo it entirely. All right, new solder on. See, that wants to fall right off. Take the desoldering gun. 
So you look at that, came right off. Clean that up a little bit. Actually, let me get a, I got a paper towel right here. Just clean that up a little bit. There's old flux and gunk on it. Um, actually, I'll get my, got a scratch pen. I don't know what I want to do there. All right. Let's look at this wire. And why don't I just expose some fresh, fresh wire there. I got my, these little wire strippers. If you can see that, uh, client tools, wire stripper. I sort of, I don't know what this is. Stopper is broken, but uh, still works just fine. All right. Maybe that's the way to do it. All right, let's solder that in. Put some more over here. I think that's pretty good. We grab my uh, multimeter just to double check continuity. I mean, I can't imagine there's a problem the way I loaded that up with solder, but never hurts to double check. So I've got my meter on continuity beep. There we go. Right here. And we're good. All right. This next one's a little bit trickier. It's got multiple wires going to the same uh, same uh, lead coming off of the uh, transformer. A little bit of flux, just in case that helps. Some new solder to help things flow. Yeah, this is a bit gross right here. All right, got them off, that's good. We don't have a ton of slack here, so I wanna be pretty judicious with what I remove. All right, look at that. Five separate wires all go into that one. Okay, let's clean up the old solder. All right. I guess uh, strip each of these one by one, tie them all together. Okay, I wrestled with that quite a bit. I got myself a little bit more slack, clean this up, and now I think this is uh, gonna be enough to attach all four, five of those tiny wires at once uh, to the lug on the uh, transformer. I don't think there's a really good way to sort of hook this in like I did with the previous one, because it'll just sort of take it all apart. So let me get these helping hands in here. All right, here we go. We will load this up and hopefully make a good connection. All right, we might be in business here. A lot of wire, uh, solder sort of dripped down, but I think I cleaned all of that up. So let's test continuity. Um, for those wires there. This is such a
a mess. All right, one of them goes here. So that's good. And then the rest go into this. So two of them here. And uh, two of them here. And I want to make sure that I'm testing from the lug. And really like the lead that goes into the winding. So I think those four are good. And this one again is good. Okay. So I'll go and uh, do the rest of these by myself off camera, spare you the pleasure of watching me struggle. Um, this one's got four. That one's got three big ones over here. This one has three big ones, big, uh, heavy gauge wire, heavier gauge wire. So um, I'll go ahead and take care of that and uh, see you in a bit. Okay, that was a ton of work, but I redid the solder connections between all of the wires on the transformer assembly and all of the lugs, all of the lugs on this side of the main transformer and on this side of the main transformer uh, and the line filter, including the, the connection that I had previously broken and all the connections on the to the lugs on the isolation transformer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a ton of work because, you know, all these wires are kind of floating in midair and you need the helping hands to hold them in place and yeah what a what a huge pain but hopefully it'll help something um you know keep us from having power issues in the future again i still need to do the the two fuse blocks those have been shipped they'll be here any day we'll get to those uh, really quick but uh yeah this is often a big source of issues on pac-mans and, and miss pac-mans is bad connections uh, uh, between the fuse blocks and everything else, uh, uh, causing resistance and burning up the edge connector uh, on the game PCB. Two more things that I want to, to quickly touch on. Uh, one, uh, in the cabinet, I noticed that I had had a crack uh, right here uh, between this panel and the, the side. Uh, I'm assuming it's just from uh, twisting. Uh, Teddy's trying to knock the camera. Um, I assume it's from just twisting the cabinet as it was moving around, and I really didn't like how it was starting to separate. So kind of a hack job. I, I squeezed some uh, wood glue into the crack and then countersunk, uh, if you can see it, countersunk three screws uh, into the side right here. Um, we'll eventually cover those up with, with Bondo and sand it and, and get some touch-up paint there. But, um, yeah, uh, much better now. Um, and, uh, you know, as the cabinet gets moved around, hopefully it won't flex and open up that joint. And one more thing I did, so you know, uh, with the sides painted black and, and everything, um, yeah, I want to take off this black paint and hopefully recover the, the blue paint and the side art um, underneath. Um, so there's a couple ways to do it. The, the safest technique tends to be um, magic erasers and 91% isopropyl alcohol. So I uh, spent a little bit of uh, just a couple of minutes um, last night and did that up here, you know, sort of a test on the, the back door. Figured if I screwed up the back door, you know, who's ever going to see that? And that was okay. It was, um, you know, it was definitely a bit of work. And some of the more stubborn areas, like where there was some pitting here and, and you know, the, the paint was a little heavier over here. Maybe I overdid it with the magic eraser and um, sort of took off some of the blue. So there was another technique that I saw online. Uh, I'll link to it um, uh, uh, in the, the video description, is soaking a paper towel in the isopropyl alcohol, uh, letting it sit essentially overnight, covered up with, with, um, with plastic wrap. So that's what I did down here kind of as a test. Um, laid the paper towel flat. I used the, um, I guess it's the Kleenex brand Viva, which is sort of more like a cloth, still a paper towel, but you know, more cloth-like. Laid it flat on the board. Poured the isopropyl alcohol on it until it was nice and saturated. Uh, put a couple sheets of uh, plastic wrap on top of it. And it's been sitting for about uh, 10 hours uh, so far. I did it earlier in the day and now it's late at night. And you can start to see it's, it's eating up. So I'm going to do uh, kind of a reveal right here. And, and hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. And hopefully we get, um, 
you know, the original uh, uh, paint recovered. So I guess sort of grab it. Uh oh. All right, the plastic wrap is kind of stuck on. Oh, and look at this. It's almost kind of, the, the paint is almost kind of peeling up, which is what I saw uh, in that thread on cloth. Wow, look at that. It's just coming right off. Wow, what a huge mess. That works super good. Look at that. Look at that. Let me get some uh, paper towel and clean this up real quick. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Um, it just ate right through that black paint. Um, you can see, you know, where it kind of, um, you know, sort of the the alcohol seeped out. It, it really like crinkled up, peeled up uh, the paint around the edges. But where the the um, paper towel was making contact with the with the back door, it's just gone. You know, uh, I had to clean it up just a tiny bit and. You know, the light's playing tricks with a little bit of the, the shading, but that looks um, just fantastic. So that's absolutely what I'm going to do. That's the technique that I'm going to do uh, to strip the black paint off of the sides uh, of the cabinet over here. We'll lay it on its side. We'll do exactly that. Um, wow. And that was no work. Literally no work. You know, this was a bunch of elbow grease with that magic eraser. Uh, and this was just, you know, Two minutes of setting it up, letting it sit for 10 hours. Maybe in the future I'll do it for, for eight hours. But uh, wow, that's, uh, that worked. That worked really, really great. So that's how we'll be stripping that paint off uh, going forward. Okay, uh, it's the next morning. Uh, I continued the experiment. I put more paper towels down on all of the remaining black paint on the back door. Soaked it in 91% isopropyl alcohol, covered it up with plastic wrap. It's been, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 hours, and uh, let's pull it off. Huh, okay. Not, uh... Ooh, okay, well, not as successful as the first experiment. I don't know if there's a big difference, a little bit better up here. Um, maybe I didn't soak it enough. Uh, huh. Interesting. Get some more paper towel here. Yeah, maybe I just didn't use enough alcohol. Interesting. Let me try something here real quick. A little bit more alcohol over here. I mean, it definitely helped. And I kind of noticed that, you know, before I pulled everything off, it looked like it had dried, dried out a bit. So maybe I didn't, I didn't even look at that. How nasty that is. Um, maybe I didn't use enough alcohol the you know uh paper towel wasn't as soaked as it should have been i don't know uh, i used i thought i used quite a bit um i uh i used almost the whole this whole 32 ounce bottle that i got from walgreens it's almost empty as you can see it's sloshing around the bottom there um all right, so let me try to clean this up just a, a little bit more because the, the paint's loose, it's coming off, but uh, yeah, let me, let me do some work. All right, I spent a couple of minutes uh, with a couple of sheets of paper towel soaked in that 91% isopropyl alcohol, and I was able to clean up most of the paint that was left over. You know, um, it's not perfect, right? If I really wanted to make this museum quality, I strip it down to the bare wood and, and repaint it again with the same color. But, you know, certainly for the back door, this is, this is not bad. Um, so I think that's going to be my new go-to technique for removing black paint off of old uh, stenciled artwork, stenciled paint. 
Um, you know, again, soaking paper towel in isopropyl alcohol, wrapping it with plastic wrap and letting it to sit, you know, essentially overnight. Uh, you know, a couple of spots were a bit trickier. Um, you know, these are where I guess the, the wood's chewed up a bit or the, the back door's chewed up a bit down to the bare wood. That's not going to remove the paint off of that. But, you know, in terms of stripping paint off of paint, um, that technique works really, really good. Like I said, I had to clean it up a bit by hand afterwards with some more paper towel and an IPA, um, the IPA that you don't drink. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd say that was a success. Good news, my order from arcadepartsandrepair.com has arrived. Got a bunch of goodies here in this bag that we're gonna need. Um, typically what I do is I buy, you know, a, a, a lot of stuff that I know I'm gonna need, cap kits, you know, whatever, just to uh, save on shipping and, and save on, on wait times. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, a bunch we'll save for later, for later in this project and for future projects. So what I'm going to work with now is I got a replacement uh, power cord, which we'll work with in a minute, and um, new fuse blocks and uh, fuses that we will um, set up on the transformer assembly right now. So, oh, another thing I got, and there goes my uh, flux. Oh, no, flux is right here. Uh, another thing I got is this um, solder reel or solder spool reel holder. Um, should make it a lot easier to uh, keep my solder organized. But yeah, so we've got two new fuse blocks here. Uh, these are just, you know, notorious for having problems on, on um, Pac-Man and, and Miss Pac-Man machines. Uh, a four fuse, if you can see this, a four fuse block for this side and a two fuse block uh, over here. So, uh, what we need to do, obviously, is remove the old fuse block. I'll do this one um, on camera and then the second one off. I suppose I just could have <laughs> cut this off, save myself a little bit of trouble. You know, that's what we'll do here. We'll just snip that clean off. All right. Uh, unscrew this from the board. We'll save these screws because we're going to use them in a minute. So here's our old fuse block that we will say goodbye to. Uh, what I need to do is prep these wires for reconnection. So let me quickly double check because <laughs> I cut all of those off at once. Yeah, brown and orange on bottom and black on bottom is, uh, is what we want. Okay. All right. So here's our new um, fuse block. Might be able to get these through the holes. Yeah, we can center them on like that. That'll make a nice connection. I think I want the, almost said the jaws of life, but the real name for these is helping hands. Just to kind of Hold this in place and allow me to make a good solder connection. Especially for like awkward angles like this where, you know, it's not like you're soldering onto a PCB where everything kind of wants to go the right way. Stuff is just kind of floating in midair. Uh, see if I can bend that wire down just to make a better connection. Uh, 
All right. Let's solder that in place. That looks like more than enough. Let's take a look at our work. It looks like it's on there pretty good. And again, let me double check. Brown and orange on the bottom. Yep, brown and orange on the bottom. Brown on top. All right. Put that in there. I think we are in good shape here. Let me double check these connections with my multimeter. Never trust your eyes. Eyes can be deceiving. First, let's reconnect this to the board or the wood board. Okay, grab my multimeter, set it to continu continuity beep, untangle myself. All right, start with the orange and or brown and orange, which goes to, let's see, yeah, up here. All right, we got a good connection there. Brown should go to uh, all the way up to the brown wire here on the interlock switch. All right, that's good. Should not connect here. I don't know if you can't see this. So I test from here on the inter, uh, interlock switch. We're good, but if I test the top one, no, unless I pull the switch. There we go. And on this side, black should go to, where does black go? Black goes all the way here. Black goes all the way to, no, yeah. Is that all the way up to the, the power cord for the, Monitor. Yep, that's good. And this brown wire goes where? Goes here over to the line filter. So I think we're good. That one's good. And That one's good, and that one's good, and that one's good. All right, so that fuse block is good. I'll go ahead and uh, replace uh, the other fuse block on the right side, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I finished uh, hooking up uh, the other new fuse block on this side. Uh, ohmed it out, tested continuity. I think we're in good shape, so good to go there. Um, one thing that made this side a little bit trickier, you know, in addition to it being twice as large as um, 
the two fuse block on the left, is all of the, the connections on the right side, all of the lugs on the right side have multiple smaller wires going onto the same lug, but uh, not too bad, we got that all sorted out. So the last thing I want to do to this transformer assembly is replace the old uh, power cord. Um, I think I showed before that, uh, you know, this, uh, it's old, uh, it's seen better days. Uh, I don't wanna have that running in my house. Um, it has this Molex, or actually it's an amp uh, connector uh, on the other end that plugs into a, uh, another, another matching amp connector. Uh, on the harness, so I want to go and replace this. I have a new power cord right here. Uh, the tips are exposed. I need to attach a, uh, a new three pin amp connector. Um, I'll crimp uh, Molex pins uh, 0.084 gauge um, onto uh, the ends, the bare ends of this new power cord. I'll crimp those pins on, put those pins inside of um, this amp connector, and we should be uh, good to go. So let's, let's do that together. First thing I need to do is crimp uh, new pins uh, onto these. Let's see, can you see that? New pins, sorry, my hands are dirty and I just dropped the pin. See there's, I'll show here. There's, uh, there's two sets of teeth. The longer ones on the left grab the insulation and the shorter ones on the right grab the bare wire. So, what we want, and if I can get this to focus, we want it to go in like this, where the first tooth, the first set of teeth, grab the insulation and the second grab the bare wire. That's how we want it to be. Uh, and usually I get this done pretty well, but doing it sort of with the camera in the way uh, makes it a bit tricky. Okay, so let's load up our crimper. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's grab our cable. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. You can see that there. I might not even be able to solder that just because there's not much room there. But uh, I think that's a good connection. Uh, let me go ahead and do the other two, the other two pins, crimp the other two pins on. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the other two uh, pins crimped onto the wires. Uh, and now it's time to put our connector housing uh, on. I want to make sure that we're keeping this um, with the right polarity, the way this is keyed. They're sort of if we can get it to focus, like uh, the middle um, female connector here is circular and the ones on either side are kind of, you know, uh, what do you call that, half circle kind of uh, shape. So we've got matching polarity with the connector here. We want to make sure we put the, uh, the wires in the right spot. Uh, the one on the far left, uh, if you can kind of see there's a texture here, it's ribbed. Uh, that means uh, neutral. So the white wire is neutral. We'll click that in. Obviously the center one is ground, so we will click that one in. Get the focus here. That one's clicked in. And the far right one uh, here is uh, smooth. There's no ribbing, uh, which means that's the, that's the live wire, that's the hot wire. So that's black uh, here. So we will click that one into the connector housing until it clicks. There's a wire sort of stiff and there we go. All right, that looks pretty good. So we've got our new placement connector there. Um, we can double check it with the, down here with the, uh, the male connector which has, it's the male connector with female pins, and this is the female connector with, uh, with male pins. And just ensure that, yep, we are good to go there. One other thing I notice is uh, there's kind of this, this loop-de-loop here that I want to sort of uh, replicate, and this uh, K 
cable tie, cable holder. So it's uh, down here. I'm meant to, I think both of these are kind of designed for stress relief if someone's tugging on the power cord. So how does this kind of go? Uh, let me go and uh, tie this and I'll come right back. Okay, I've made a loop that kind of, yeah, I guess approximates what was there originally. I'm not entirely sure if this is the original power cord. Uh, it looks like a replacement to me, but, uh, and obviously that was a, a flat one and this is a round cable and I've uh, transferred the, the uh, cable tie over so we can hook this up and uh, connect the cable tie yeah that'll work all right so there's our new our new power cord um, and I guess we are ready Get this out of the way put these extras back in i think we are ready to test our uh sort of refurbished transformer assembly um we'll hook it up to power we're not going to put it back in the cabinet just yet but we'll hook it up to power and we'll test um uh the voltages that it's producing uh to make sure they are in um good shape uh, but you know before we do that actually we have new fuses to install. We've got some one amp fuses. We've got some five amp fuses. And we have some two amp slow blow. All right. So, uh, Toss that back in here. Let's move the camera over. Isn't this thrilling? Installing new fuses. Wow. All right, so on the, the left side here, this um, uh, two fuse, fuse block, uh, I think we've decided that uh, for the line amps, we're gonna put that two amp, or the line volts, we're gonna put the, the two amp slow blow in. And this, I believe, goes to the monitor. This is from the isolation transformer. Uh, we're also going to put a two amp slow blow. So that's this here, two amp, 250 volt slow blow fuse. Pop that sucker in. And we'll pop this one in. And all slow blow means is that it takes a little bit um, longer of a time of, uh, or duration of overcurrent before the fuse will actually blow. If it just uh, uh, peaks for uh, a moment, it won't blow the fuse versus the, the normal or sometimes called fast blow um, fuses. You know, even just a, a momentary um, spike in current will trip that fuse, blow that fuse. So uh, now over here we have two one amp, um, uh, fuses on the 12 volt lines and two 5 amp fuses on the 7 volt lines. So here's a 1 amp 250 volt uh, set of fast blow fuses. Again, all these came from arcadepartsandrepair.com. Uh, and no, they are not paying me to mention them. I'm just a very satisfied customer. I ordered this stuff on. Tuesday and today is Friday and it was delivered today. So and it comes from Peter ships out of Montana and it comes all the way to Virginia in three days is pretty darn quick. And here are my five amp 250 volt fast blow fuses. The bottom two uh, fuse spots. And one more. And uh Maybe I should have just double checked these uh, fuses before popping them in, but we can do a quick test with the multimeter uh, in circuit just to confirm that they are in fact good to go. All right, Fluke 117. If 
function set to continuity beep. Touch the two sides of the fuse holder. That's good. That's good. Good, 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 good. And you can even cross over because these are both on the same lines. These, uh, yeah, these are the uh, AC voltage coming off. So that's good. So we are ready to test the actual voltage, hook this up to power, turn it on, and test the voltages being produced. So let me go get set up for that. Okay, I've got things cleaned up a bit and we're ready to test the voltages being produced um, by the transformer assembly. Um, so obviously we're gonna be testing live voltage. Um, so, you know, uh, practice extreme caution. I am not responsible for you electrocuting yourself, um, uh, but it's something that we need to do to make sure that this thing is functioning properly because we don't wanna put bad voltages uh, into the monitor or onto the, uh, the game board. Um, it's plugged in, but I've got it turned off uh, at the wall right now. Uh, one thing we're not gonna test is we're not gonna test this part of the, um, uh, the harness, which just goes to the, um, uh, uh, to the edge connector that goes onto the board. We will test that later once we replace uh, the edge connector with a new edge connector. And plus we can really test the voltages that are being produced and going onto those lines, uh, just coming off of, um, coming off of the, the, the transformer here, the step-down transformer, and off of the, the fuse blocks. Um, so yeah, let me go uh, turn on the power at the wall. And now we have voltages going um, into the harness. Um, right now, the only thing that should be live at all is uh, the, the input to the, um, uh, the interlock switch here. Uh, we have not yet fix this wiring and, and tied it back into the main power switch at the top of the cabinet. That still just got this, you know, I guess sort of jumped together uh, here. So the only thing that should be live in the entire cabinet uh, are those uh, inputs into the, um, into the, the interlock switch. So we've got our multimeter set to AC volts uh, and I should be able to just touch uh, the leads here. And uh, yeah, we're getting about, if you can see that, 121.5.6. So those are the line volts that are coming in uh, from my wall. Um, nothing else in the entire machine should be live right now. We can confirm that. This is the input for the monitor. We've got nothing. So let's go ahead and pull the interlock switch, and that'll start sending voltages or sending uh, uh, current to the rest of uh, the transformer assembly. All right, so we've pulled that. I'm gonna start with the parts of the, the harness that are over here, kind of a little bit easier to grab. Um, so this goes to the monitor. This is the power input for the monitor, um, which comes off of the uh, isolation transformer, the separate isolation transformer, and that's the ground clip right there. So I'll put one lead in on this side, one lead in on the other, and it uh, looks like 123.6, so uh, actually goes up a little bit, but um, I think that's probably okay. A little high, but probably okay. Don't really want that falling and potentially catching something. And then this part of the harness uh, sends power up to the, um, uh, uh, what you call it, the, uh, the, the marquee light, the fluorescent light bulb uh, back there. So that, again, okay, 121.3. So that looks pretty good. Again, that's AC power. All right, let's come over here. We can test the voltages coming off of uh, the, the lugs of the transformer or even just testing them right off of the, um, the lugs of the fuse block. So these two 12 volt uh, connections should become 24. So 25, again, a little bit high, not too, not too bad. And these two sevens should make about 14, 14.8. Uh, and then if we tie to ground, if we grab a ground somewhere here, uh, let me think about that for a second. Up, 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 uh, maybe off of the this. Here we go. 
So 12 and a half on that one. 12 and a half on that one. Uh, about seven points. 7 7.4, 7.5, 12.5, 12.5. Tiny bit high, but I think, uh, I think those are acceptable. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say that, uh, and everything coming off of the isolation transformer just goes straight to the, um, the power, uh, cord for the, uh, for the monitor. It's, um, uh, you can even see it's, uh, um, it comes, um, off as a white wire that goes directly from this lug to the power input power cable for the, um, for the monitor and then black or, um, goes on there. Yeah. It's, um, brown and orange comes over here, comes on to the, uh, fuse block over here becomes the black wire that again comes back over here. So we've already tested that. So, uh, I would say that was a success. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's turn off the interlock switch. Let's turn off the power coming in off the wall. Um, yeah. So again, you know, was that really necessary to do all of that? Kind of right. Um, it's always a good idea to replace those, uh, the, the original uh, fuse blocks because they can cause so many problems. We've already seen that with this uh, game. Uh, we'll see in upcoming episodes just how um, uh, burnt up that uh, edge connector is uh, on the game PCB and even the, the hacks that former owners or operators um, installed to, uh, to deal with it. We'll fix it the right way by fixing the edge connector, fixing the, um, you know, the, the connections with copper tape and putting a new edge connector onto the harness. Um, and by doing this here, sort of, you know, replacing these fuse blocks, we're you know, hopefully going to avoid issues in the future. We've got a new power cord coming into the machine. We redid the solder connections and all the lugs uh, for the, um, uh, the step-down transformer and the isolation transformer. Um, I'll actually uh, uh, link to a video. That was a problem that um, Jack Lick ran into a couple of years ago and his Ms. Pac-Man stopped working. Uh, he thought initially it was a, a bad transformer, like a transformer went bad, which is a pretty rare thing to, to happen. Uh, turned out what it was, was um, bad connections. Uh, the connections had uh, gotten, um, gotten bad over time and, uh, you know, stopped, uh, stopped sending voltage. And uh, even when he was testing it, he couldn't even get a good uh, connection on the lug. That's how sort of dirty it was. So Cleaned that up, made the connections again, and, and everything was fine. So we did that here too. Just a little bit of preventative maintenance, you know, very, very sort of um, monotonous and repetitive, sort of doing that over and over and over again, especially with, you know, things like this where they're just kind of floating connections, right? It's not a, a PCB where you've got kind of things, um, you know, under control and, and they're all on the same plane. You know, we needed to use those uh, helping hands quite a bit. So other than that, for this transformer assembly, we're basically good for now. Uh, we can go ahead and install this uh, back into the cabinet. Uh, and when we do that, uh, we'll take a moment and um, re-fix uh, this uh, hack right here and, and actually wire that into the, uh, the main power switch on the top of the cabinet. Um, so, and hopefully we won't have any uh, further power issues um, with, this, uh, with this game. So, yeah, just to recap sort of what we did here, uh, kind of, you know, spruced up, refurbished, whatever you want to call it, that... Um, uh, the transformer assembly from the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, we did what I think was a pretty successful test uh, to remove the black paint uh, doing it on the back door. Um, you know, sort of, you can kind of see where I did this in stages. Like this part was really from, um, you know, with the magic eraser and the isopropyl. Uh, uh, and then down here was that first go with the, the paper towel soaked overnight and wrapped in uh, uh, um, uh, plastic wrap. And then we did the rest of the cabinet. I th or the rest of the back door. I think what we want to do to avoid this sort of, you know, patchiness or, you know, discoloration is uh, do it all at once and uh, go kind of easy, right? So, um, you know, use a good amount of isopropyl. Um, just kind of stay away from the edges so it doesn't wick uh, into the, the particle board. Um, although I think the, the cabinet sides are plywood. Um, and, uh, you know, only go maybe four to six hours 
um, just to be as gentle as possible to hopefully restore and preserve or recover uh, the side art uh, that's hiding under the black paint. And obviously the, the front is painted with a stencil as well. So one last thing before we call it uh, an end to this episode is I need some advice. I need input from you all. So obviously the control panel overlay uh, that's currently on the machine is totally hosed. It's totally trashed, right? Uh, almost half of it is, is missing. So uh, we can't leave, we can't leave that. Uh, I've got a couple of options, you know, obviously I could get a, a brand new reproduction uh, and just replace it entirely. I do, however, have, whoa, this other uh, Miss Pack um, control panel that I picked up uh, in, a, in a random parts lot not too long ago. And it's in much better condition than the one on, um, on my machine here. Uh, there are a couple of imperfections. There's a little piece missing right there at the top, if you can see, and then a larger sort of gouge or whatever you want to call it. Whoa, the gimbal doesn't want to move over, kind of in the corner over here. So what do you think? Should I clean this one up and use this control panel with this, call it a 98% a um, uh, uh, intact original uh, control panel overlay? Or should I put a, um, a reproduction, brand new pristine reproduction on the machine? Um, let me know what you think. I don't want to bias the, the decision. Uh, I think if this was actually on the machine, I probably would just leave it. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Go with the reproduction or uh, this 98% intact uh, original to replace the one that's trash on the machine. So I think that'll probably do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. This was part two of the Miss Pac-Man restoration project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, thanks for all of the, the likes, the comments, the subscribes, all the sort of great feedback has been awesome. And uh, hopefully I will see you on the next one. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.